So what we have here are two samples of soil from Gale, Texas, the next project we're gonna do. This one is a very high clay content, probably 50% or more. This one is a very low clay content, I would guess 5%. We haven't done a, a lab test on these yet to see what the exact clay percentage is. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix these two to get the ideal mix. And that's, these are samples of that. This is four of the sandy soil to one clay soil. Here's a three to one and here's a two to one. Now they all work, but we're looking for the best mix for strength and for convenience. Um, it's much easier for the owner to get the sandy soil than it is the clay soil. So there's a, a balance we're trying to strike here. We're gonna make some of these today, except we're gonna make, these are, are only soil, and the ones we're gonna to make today, we're gonna to mix in uh, various percentages of stabilizer, uh, cement or cement or lime. The first test that we're gonna do is called the jar test, and you fill a jar, you know, to not an exact percentage, this is about a third, full of soil. And this is the clay soil. We'll fill another one with the sandy soil. About the same. And then when we have the dry soil on it, we're gonna put a piece of, of tape right here. It will demonstrate that if either of these soils are highly expansive, the finished product will have raised pretty far above the tape, then we know it's highly expansive soil. Also, because of this piece of tape, we'll also demonstrate to you whether your, your clay is highly expansive or not expansive. But you'll see, when this is done, you'll see a line along the bottom because the heavier granules sink first. So you'll see, you know, the sand at the bottom and the clay and silt above it. You have an idea of expansiveness and it gives you a ballpark visual indication of, of the ratio of your of your uh, granules to to the, the clay itself. That's all it does. Um, but it tells you something. It's worth doing. We're gonna fill this with water. And then we shake it. Shake, 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 shake. Until all the particles are suspended in the water. Okay, and we'll just set these over here somewhere where they won't be disturbed. Like that. And we probably won't get a result on this today. It'll take, typically you let them set at least overnight. And then we'll be able to see a line between the granules and the, the clay silt. Okay, so that's the, that's the jar test. All right. Um, okay. So these, I right here. Two, three, four. All right. Now we're going to measure um, our soil and sand mixes. This is a, a test from a long time ago. This one happens to be stabilized with 7% lime. It's been in this jar for about five years. Very firm. Lime stabilization does work uh, if you have the patience to do it and if you have the right clay. So that's uh, an example of a 7% lime stabilized New Mexican Wow. We're going to put the soil in this uh, wok uh, by volume. So we're going to do a three to one on this particular, particular mix, three of the sandy soil. Hiccups. And one cup of the high clay soil. So we have three to one this by volume. Okay. Now we're going to do weight. 
because we're going to weigh in various percentages of stabilizer in this mix. To weigh it, we have a gram scale right here. We want to get real accurate. The way the gram scale works is you turn it on, it'll light up and end up at zero. And because we don't want to weigh this, we just want to weigh the ingredients. We now put this measuring device on here. It weighs 7.82 grams. And then we hit tear, which is zeros this out, meaning that when we put this on here again, it's only going to weigh the amount of stuff in the cup. So we'll just weigh these cups. This one is 31.13 grams. I'll try to get enough in here to make a few blocks. 25.49. We have 295.77 grams of soil in our wok. Now, the first percentage that we want to test is five. Five percent, this first set of blocks is gonna be five percent Portland cement. So, how do we know how much Portland to add to this? What we do is we take our number 295.77, divide by 0.95 because the other 5% is gonna be Portland cement. That's 311.34, 311.34. So 311.34 minus the weight of the soil, 295.77 equals 15, Point five seven. That's how many grams of ordinary Portland cement we want to add to this mix to make the mix 95% soil and 5% Portland cement. Now we want 15.57 grams of Portland cement. Oh, look at that, 15.54, we're in three one hundredths of a gram. We're gonna call that close enough. Okay, so this mix is now 5%. Typically our earth blocks take about 10% moisture content, which is one of the advantages of earth blocks is that they don't use very much water. <laughs> Now, we know that we have 311.34 grams of material in here. So we can, we can weigh our water so that we can get exactly 10% in there. 31.13 grams of water will give us exactly 10% moisture in here. Okay, that's the right moisture to get us 10% in here. It's nice to put in with a spritzer bottle, but we're just dumping it in this time. This is one of those things that'll fool you. It looks like you start mixing it and it looks kind of lumpy. Ah, oh, too much water, but it's not. It's just right. And you'll see when we get it all mixed up, how it binds together which will give you a, a little bit of a visual one of what it should look like when it's got about the right amount of moisture content in it. And you can use that same squeeze test when you're making blocks to see if, you're, if you've got too much or too little moisture. The block machines will also tell you when they make a block, if there's way too much water, uh, the machine will actually extrude the block. <laughs> or if it's not that much, it'll make a block that it instantly starts to get some little spiderweb cracks on the top of it. 
And that's because it's got too much water. It's drying too fast and then it'll crack. If you've got too little water, the block will be uh, dry and friable on the edges. You'll be able to knock the corners off and rub the edges off because it's too dry. So, like I say, the machine will tell you when you're making the blocks if you're in the ballpark. Uh, we don't want to make this seem more complicated than it is. I mean, we're doing a lab test here where we can get real accurate, but there's a wide spectrum of soils uh, that you can use to successfully make an earth block. You have to have clay uh, that holds the block together when it's coming out of the machine. It's also the magic ingredient in the block. It's the one that absorbs and releases water vapor, which uh, contributes to the passive, passive cooling technique uh, that we advertise. Sand, gravel, and silt are the other three ingredients in the soil besides clay. And they, they are electrically neutral, whereas clay has a, a negative charge, which is what makes it sticky. So if you're out searching for soil for earth blocks and you walk around in the field and your shoes look like Mickey Mouse when you're done, you have clay. Now, that small amount of moisture, 10%, has resulted in this. And just like for an earth block, when, you, when you're checking for the moisture, you should be able to squeeze it and it should hold together like it does here. But when you poke it with your finger, it should come apart easily. If it's, if it's already in a ball that resists your finger, you've got too much moisture. So there's a, there's a simple little test there. Now we're going to make some little 5% Portland Statewide earth blocks with that mix. This is a mini block maker. This particular machine is manufactured by AECT in San Antonio, Texas. They're kind of expensive, but they're real handy. <laughs> and we're just gonna fill this with our sample. When you're trying to make, uh, you know, consistent mini blocks, you know, again, like for like, you want to do the same thing to this fill technique every time. You want to just dump it in there. You don't want to pack it. You just want to fill it evenly. Okay. And evenly can be determined by scraping it off, we'll use one of these. You want to make sure the corners get filled. Let me scrape it off. Oops. There we go. We put this in the machine, like so. And then we're going to pump it up with this hydraulic pump over here. You might want to get over here, Dylan, where you can see the gauge right here. We're closing the, uh, the valve here, and then we're going to pump it up. And again, for consistency, when we're making these blocks, we want to pump them all to the same, same pressure. We're going to use 2,000, like that. This takes a lot of pump. Here it is, mini block. So we have our little block. There it is. This is three to one sandy soil to clayey soil and 5% Portland cement. We will mark it as such momentarily. Okay, here's the first one. <laughs> 